My Three Sons is a classic television series that started in the 1960s. It's about a widower, Steve Douglas, raising his three boys. The show was known for its warmth and humor, often tackling the day-to-day -day challenges of family life. As we dive into the world of the Douglas family, you'll find many moments that will make you laugh, some that might shock you, and a few that could even bring a tear to your eye. Now, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, do you have a memory that you hold dear from watching My Three Sons? Maybe it's an episode that you watched with family or a scene that has stayed with you over the years. Second, has this TV series touched your life in a special way or inspired you somehow? We're eager to hear about your experiences too. What's your most memorable moment or personal story related to My Three Sons? Your stories and memories are important to us and we'd love for you to share them in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going and share the joy this show has brought to so many. The TV series My Three Sons, which aired in the 1960s, is a story about a single father raising his three sons. It was one of the first shows to feature a non-traditional family structure, which was a big change for its time. The show is still relevant today because it showed that families come in different shapes and sizes. It also had a positive message about the importance of family support and love, no matter what challenges come your way. This message continues to connect with viewers even now, making the show a lasting piece of television history. Give me a big hug, but I don't want to get you all covered with grief. Well, don't let that stop you. Oh! <laughs> Hey kids! Hey you kids, Selena's here! Transitioning from a sequential filming process to an out-of-sequence method, William Frawley, who had previously worked on a show that followed a linear production routine, found the adjustment challenging. The show's musical theme captures the essence of a family ensemble, with simple tunes played by the youngest members, and more complex performances symbolizing the older ones, culminating in a saxophone melody representing the father figure, a nod to Fred McMurray's role in a film where he played a saxophonist who becomes a mentor to young scouts. The setting for the early seasons, a house in the fictional Bryant Park, is actually a real location in Los Angeles, grounding the show in a tangible piece of the city. A very serious matter, Ernie. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. In a surprising turn of events during the show's progression, the character Ernie became a permanent member of the Douglas household, yet his loyal companion, Wilson the dog, vanished without any on-screen farewell or mention. Adding to the show's quirks, Don Grady, who had departed from the cast, continued to be credited in the opening sequence throughout the final season, a nod to his lasting presence in the show's legacy. Fred McMurray, who portrayed the patriarch Steve Douglas, left a lasting impression on audiences, securing his place in television history through this role. Come across them quickly. Table for one. You're safe, Mr. Douglas. This is the gentleman I was expecting. Oh, hi. Behind the scenes, life mirrored the close-knit bonds portrayed on screen, with cast members Tim Considine and Meredith Macri entering a real-life relationship during their time on the show. Similarly, Don Grady and Tina Cole found romance, nearly reaching the point of marriage. However, their relationship ended just as Grady decided to depart from the series. Adding to the show's charm was Tramp, the family dog, whose name paid homage to the beloved character from Disney's Lady and the Tramp. Interestingly, the series almost carried the lead actor's name, The Fred McMurray Show, but McMurray himself opposed the idea, leading to the title by which it became known. On his own. Steve. <laughs> In the early stages of casting for the beloved family show, Eddie Albert was considered for the lead role of the father figure. However, it was William Damaris who left a lasting impression, not only on the screen but also in Hollywood history. He was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to his work and connection with the audience. The celebration was a memorable one, with fellow cast members and fans gathering to share in the moment. It's noteworthy that the actors who came on board during the later seasons, which introduced color broadcasts, did not reach the milestone of 100 episodes, marking a significant shift in the show's dynamic during its run. house so much why doesn't he move in yeah then in the early seasons the family dynamic shifted with the departure of the eldest son whose final appearance coincided with his on-screen wedding this event marked the introduction of a new family member setting the stage for future episodes that explored themes of adoption and family growth 
The series also delved into the relationships and tensions between characters, notably between two older cast members known for their gruff personas. Off-screen, their rivalry was just as evident, adding a layer of authenticity to their on-screen interactions. In another interesting turn, a well-known actress was considered for a film adaptation of a popular novel, but the role eventually went to another star years later. The series' ability to intertwine personal developments with character arcs provided a rich tapestry of storytelling that resonated with audiences. I don't want to be in the same room with that clunky urn. Not bad, huh? Bad! In the early years, the show was produced at the Zulu Studios, but a change in ownership led to a shift in the filming location to CBS Studio City, coinciding with the characters' move to California. The production was unique for its time due to Fred McMurray's filming method, which required shooting scenes out of order to accommodate his schedule, filming all his parts in just 65 days spread out over the year. This approach meant regular haircuts for the cast to maintain appearance consistency and guest stars returning after months to finish episodes. The method was not noticeable until the appearance of Don Lynn as Doty, whose changing teeth revealed the non-sequential filming. William Frawley, who was used to filming in sequence from his time on I Love Lucy, found this method challenging. For the role of Barbara, Beverly Garland was suggested by June Haver, who was married to McMurray in real life. Miss um, Fergit? I'm here on a mission. When that mission is accomplished, I'll return to... In the early 1970s, a notable friendship behind the scenes mirrored the on-screen family dynamics. Beverly Garland and Julie London shared a close bond, with Garland acting alongside London's stepdaughter, Ron Troop. The series saw a significant change when William Frawley, who played a beloved character, had to depart due to health issues, which also affected his insurability for the production. His character's exit was creatively explained as a move to Ireland. After his departure, the character was occasionally mentioned during that season, but was not referenced again after the show transitioned to a new network. Cry, are you? I mean, uh, In a notable shift, Barry Livingston's character Ernie transitioned from being Chip's contemporary to his younger brother, a change that reflected their real-life age gap. This adjustment not only added a new dynamic to the show, but also set a precedent for future family sitcoms, hinting at the structure that would later be seen in The Brady Bunch. As time has passed, Barry Livingston stands out as the sole regular cast member from the show who remains a part of the Screen Actors Guild, continuing his active involvement in the industry. What's the matter with you two guys? You haven't said three words all the way home. 17-year-old bride, 1939 jalopy. In a quiet moment at the kitchen table, Ernie shares with Dodie that he too was adopted into the family, a fact that had gone unmentioned for five years. This revelation is met with no surprise or further conversation, highlighting the seamless bond he has formed with his family. Meanwhile, Don Grady stands out as the sole brother not to have graced a Best Picture Oscar-nominated film. On another note, Fred McMurray's portrayal of Steve Douglas earned him a spot as the seventh greatest TV dad, a testament to the character's lasting appeal and influence on audiences over the years. What are you doing? I'm putting on my sock. What does it look like? I'm... <laughs> a beloved father figure on television, Steve Douglas, earned his place among the top TV dads, reflecting the values and challenges of single parenthood. The show also served as a promotional platform for automotive brands, showcasing the latest models to American families. Chevrolet led the way in the early years, followed by Pontiac's prominent presence, and later Ford Lincoln Mercury took over, integrating their vehicles into the storyline. The musical score, with its distinctive orchestral and woodwind themes, set the tone for the episodes, creating an auditory signature that complemented the visual experience. Uh, make democracy work. Keep girls out of the White House. <laughs> In the midst of family and comedic adventures, a shaggy dog named Tramp brought laughter and warmth to the household, thanks to the training expertise of Franken. Meanwhile, Cynthia Pepper, who shared the screen with Elvis Presley, developed a close friendship with Yvonne Craig. Their bond extended beyond the set, leading to memorable travels across Europe's most famous cities. Uncle Charlie, a character with a seafaring past in the Merchant Marines, added his own unique touch to the dynamic of living with Steve and his sons, bringing tales of the sea into the suburban setting. Oh! <laughs> 
They're lovely, all of them. I'm glad you like them. A familiar house with stone walls and a distinctive roof known from another family show and a Ray Mullane film shares its architecture with a ranch from an earlier era. Tina Cole, who graced the screen, shares her lineage with Buddy Cole, known for his musical talent on keys and vinyl. William Frawley, a notable figure in entertainment, holds the unique distinction of being the first to perform My Melancholy Baby, a song that found its origins in a Denver pub and became a nightly request, thanks to a well-known writer's persistent shouts. This piece of history adds a layer of authenticity to a commonly depicted scene in comedic acts. Kathy? No. I uh, thought we had to talk about that, Chip. In a unique twist of fate, the show featured Stanley Livingston and Barry Livingston as brothers, mirroring their real-life relationship. While Stanley took on the role of Chip, Barry portrayed Ernie, adding a layer of authenticity to their on-screen family dynamics. Off-screen, the cast experienced its own drama. Don Grady, who played Robbie, considered leaving when Tina Cole joined as Katie. Despite his initial reservations, life imitated art, and a real-life romance blossomed between Grady and Cole, leading them to the brink of marriage twice. Well, well I'll, uh, I'll have it renewed the uh, first chance I get. Oh, well, you better do it immediately. Oh, yes, I will. Mr. Fred McMurray shared his love for golf with Beverly Garland, teaching her the game during their time working together. Lois January, known for her earlier work, returned to television in smaller roles, including appearances on the same show and other popular series of the time. She also became a familiar face at Western fan conventions. Beverly Garland is fondly remembered for her roles that left a lasting impression on viewers, particularly as Barbara Harper Douglas and later as Dorothy Dottie West in another well-loved series. Chance to know you better. You'll probably know more about what you want then. In the landscape of television, age discrepancies between actors and their characters are not uncommon. Ron Troop portrayed Polly, Chip's wife, as an 18-year-old, despite being 25 at the time of her debut. William Frawley, known for his acting, also had a notable singing talent in his youth. Contrary to popular belief, it was Frawley, not Al Jolson, who first performed the hit song My Mammy for vaudeville audiences. Plot recycling is a familiar practice in television. The Brady Bunch reused storylines from this series in episodes like Catch You, which mirrored Tramp or Ernie, the winner echoing a hunk of hardware, and two peats in a pod reflecting the wrong Robbie. These instances highlight the show's influence and the commonality of shared narratives in the industry. William Frawley's departure from the beloved show was not by choice. He truly appreciated his time on set. His exit was made more difficult by the fact that his replacement was William Damaris, someone he notably disliked. The legacy of the original cast has dwindled over time. With Tim Considine's death, Stanley Livingston, Don Lynn, and Tina Cole remain as the surviving members from the initial ensemble. Notably, Stanley Livingston now stands as the sole surviving son from the trio that the show's title references. Douglas, of all people. Well, hello, Pam. In a classic family sitcom, the character Bub is known for his unique name, which originated from a young family member's innocent mispronunciation of Bill. Consistency in casting was a hallmark of the show, with Fred McMurray's presence in every episode setting a record for television actors. His colleague Stanley Livingston also demonstrated commitment, appearing throughout the entire series, albeit missing a few episodes. The dedication of the cast was mirrored by McMurray's yearly contract renewals, ensuring the show's continuity over its impressive 12-year run. You can start really living. I'll see you later, Ray. My leftovers just left. <laughs> In a significant shift for television during the mid-1960s, a well-known family show made its transition to color broadcasts. This change coincided with the show's move to a new network. Additionally, Tina Cole, who later became known for her role as Katie, had previously appeared in different roles, often as one of the main character's love interests. The lead actor, Fred McMurray, negotiated a unique contract that required his presence on set for only 65 days each year. This arrangement led to the supporting cast frequently filming without him using a stand in during their scenes. The show enjoyed a long run, spanning over a decade. Within the storyline, the character Charlie is introduced as the brother of the family's previous housekeeper, Bub. 
written contract. No, you just gave your word. And I don't suppose anybody can... In a quiet town named Bryant Park, the Douglas family began their story before heading west to California. The father, Steve Douglas, brought a wealth of experience from his career as an aeronautical engineer with a focus on structural design, coupled with his past as a test pilot. Reflecting his real-life skills, the show's theme tune was distinguished by a saxophone melody layered over chopsticks, a nod to Fred McMurray's early professional days playing the saxophone with big bands. Name two. Now, Mr. Douglas, I want you to help me prove to the ladies and gentlemen... In a twist of fate, Eddie Albert declined the lead role that would have seen him as the family head, Steve Douglas. His decision to focus on movies led him to pass on another television role, Wilbur on Mr. Ed, though he eventually joined the cast of Green Acres. The departure of actors William Frawley and Tim Consindine saw their characters Bub and Mike fade into the background with little to no mention in later episodes. The show also quietly moved past the fact that Ernie was adopted. In a nod to real-life locations, the series used the Hollywood Burbank Airport as the stand-in for the exterior shots of the aircraft plant where Steve and Robbie worked in the later seasons. I'm going up too. What are you taking the TV magazine for? Before his time on The Beloved Family Show, William Frawley had a tumultuous incident where he was removed from a 1928 Broadway production for a physical altercation with a fellow actor. The series itself underwent a significant transition when it switched networks due to the original network's reluctance to support the increased expenses associated with color filming. Fred McMurray, who later became known for his fatherly role, had a rich background in entertainment, performing in vaudeville and Broadway, where he shared the stage with notable talents and even sang alongside a famous chantus in a 1930 review. His early career included a mix of music and acting, setting the stage for his diverse roles in television and film. Even if you don't mean it, you just can't threaten children with uh, well, things like walking the plank or the Watusi red ant. In the landscape of television history, the dynamics off screen can be as compelling as those on screen. William Frawley, known for his role in I Love Lucy, carried the weight of a professional rivalry with co-star Vivian Vance into his next significant role. Despite their mutual disdain, they were considered for a spin-off that never materialized due to Vance's refusal to continue their on-screen partnership. Frawley, however, found success elsewhere, securing a memorable part in a popular family show. The setting of a show can become a character in its own right. For one famous family series, the producers creatively repurposed a barn from a well-known ranch, transforming it into the iconic exterior of the main house. This clever use of an existing structure added a layer of authenticity and charm to the show setting. Casting decisions can often take unexpected turns. Fred McMurray, who eventually became synonymous with the role of the wise and patient single father, was not the initial choice for the part. The role was offered to him after another actor, focused on his burgeoning film career, declined the opportunity. McMurray's portrayal would go on to define the character for generations of viewers. Douglas, he's a, uh, well, he's a new groom around here. This is, this is Bert Henderson. He's the... Fred McMurray, who would later become known for his role in a popular television comedy, previously shared the screen with Tim Considine in the film The Shaggy Dog. This show, notable for its longevity, aired 369 episodes across 12 years, making it the second longest running comedy in United States television history, only outpaced by the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. In its final season, the departure of actor Don Grady, who played Robbie, was addressed within the storyline by having his character relocate to Peru due to work, with his on-screen wife Katie accompanying him. You guys better move on, she gets hacked real easy. <laughs> Fred McMurray stood out as the steadfast lead in all 380 episodes, a feat unmatched by any other cast member. The series shared a production company with Family Affair and to Rome with Love, allowing for crossover episodes, notably with Robbie and Katie appearing in the latter. However, Family Affair never intersected with the show. Behind the scenes, Ryan O'Neill was initially cast as Robbie, but was replaced by Don Grady after McMurray expressed reservations. The original pilot featuring O'Neill has not been released, though he did return for a guest spot in the second season. Yes. Well, Dad's not gonna let you use an adding machine to do your arithmetic. Grown-ups use them to do theirs. Yeah, well, kids have to do it. In the evolving storyline of this long-running series, the departure of Don Grady, who played Robbie, prompted the writers to consider significant changes for his character. 
They contemplated two dramatic turns of divorce between Robbie and his wife Katie or the character's death. Despite these potential storylines, the show maintained its focus on family dynamics and continued without implementing these drastic changes. Notably, the series, which spanned 12 seasons, featured only one episode centered around Thanksgiving and notably did not produce any episodes celebrating Christmas. This absence of holiday-themed episodes was unusual for a family series of its era. Additionally, the series was one of the rare shows to successfully transition between television networks, moving from ABC to CBS in the 1965-1966 season, where it concluded its final seven seasons. This network change did not hinder the show's ability to connect with its audience, as it remained a staple of television viewing for many households. No, of course you don't. But I'll bet Bob does. I remember you, uh, you took a big fistful of marshmallow frosting. In a unique twist of casting, Doris Singleton portrayed the role of mother-in-law to two different characters. Initially, she appeared as Helen, the mother of Sally, during the preparations for Sally and Mike's wedding in the fifth season. Later, in the 11th season, she returned as Margaret, Polly's mother, amidst the events leading to Chip and Polly's elopement. Fred McMurray's approach to filming was unconventional. He insisted on completing all his scenes at the start of production, resulting in episodes being shot out of sequence. This method was not evident until the irregular growth of Don Lynn's teeth became noticeable across the 1969-1970 season, varying significantly when she shared the screen with McMurray. The character Chip, originally named Richard, earned his nickname due to his youthful mispronunciation of his name as Chipper, which was eventually shortened and affectionately used by his father. Maybe a little awkward in uh, 20th century Bryant Park. Honorable father of my master. Throughout its run, the show saw many characters come and go, but Chip consistently remained a part of the family ensemble. Notably, his presence was less frequent in the final season, where he appeared in just a handful of episodes. His absence was also felt in specific earlier episodes, notably The Love God and The Recital. Additionally, both Chip and Ernie were missing from the episode titled Dr. Osborne, M.D. Noticed how thoughtful and considerate you were. <laughs> Amidst the laughter and lighthearted moments, the show experienced a real-life tragedy with the untimely death of William Frawley, who played the beloved character of Uncle Bub. His passing in 1966 marked a somber moment for the cast and crew as they lost not just a character, but a cherished colleague. The show continued, but the absence of Uncle Bub was felt both on and off the screen, reminding viewers of the fragility of life, even in the midst of fictional storytelling thing in the world. Well, okay. 